Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this video we're going to talk about dynamic needs, which is designed to convert settlement building from just placing structures and decorations to an actual city management style of gameplay. So note that if you don't like the sound of this, it can be turned off. For some of you, depending on how you answered the startup wizard for some settlements, dynamic needs will already be disabled. But if you've ever found that your UI suddenly showed 999 for water or defense or some of the other things up at the top there, it's a good chance you have dynamic needs on. So that's just a bug in the vanilla UI. It's incapable of displaying negative numbers. And negative numbers are one of the ways that some settlements does this balancing act to create this city management gameplay. So if you're using HUD framework, you will have the little UI on the bottom left of my screen there. And you'll notice that next to those same I, those same resources that have the 999s, you see a negative number next to the bar. So that's the actual score you have. So there's a huge benefit to using the HUD framework module that uh, I imagine everybody should be using just because it enables a lot of possibilities for a bunch of different mods. But even if for some reason you can't, it's conflicting with another mod or whatnot, just know that all you have to do is build more of that particular resource and you'll pull it out of the 999 which is just representing that means you have a negative number so if you pretend that 999 means you have zero uh, you just know you got to keep building until you get it above that so dynamic needs was put in place to make your settlements feel like a living system something you have to nurture as it grows rather than the vanilla system where you know exactly right from the beginning what needs you need and then you can just spam it down so instead sim settlements focuses dynamic needs on five resources and they're the same resources that you can expect to interact with in the vanilla game but we use them a little bit differently and those are food water power defense and happiness so depending on the plots you build, they will apply negatives to certain resources and some of them will also apply positives. And then you'll need to build additional plots or workshop items to combat those negatives and keep your resources in the green. So to make this easier, that's another thing that the HUD piece from HUD Framework will do is you can just focus on filling up all of those meters. But if you're not using HUD Framework for some reason, just keep all of the things up in the workshop mode up in the green and you will be in good shape as well. So for those of you who can't use HUD Framework, you do have an option to, to play with this the HUD on the left is just to make things a little more useful and it also gives you some extra information based on other sim settlement systems which will be covered in other videos so each of the different plot types has a different effect depending on the type the building plan level of the plot and in some cases even the person who owns the plot can actually affect these scores but if you ever want to know how a plot is affecting your settlement you can simply walk up to the plot and you will find an option called look at plaque and if you bring that up you'll get a bunch of information about the plaque or about the plot so the first thing up is the design that will tell you the name of the building plan and the creator so generally Generally, these are going to be from the base mod, they're ones I created, and then as you get into add-on packs, you'll see those creators accordingly. Next, you'll have a note which will describe something about the plot. So for the base sim settlements, they have very little information, they're just kind of flavor. Some of the add-on packs that do more complex things will give you a note that will tell you about how the plot works in a little more detail. Next up, you've got some information that should be pretty self-explanatory about how they affect things, but there's one I want to cover in particular, which is power. If you see that number in the negative, it's not telling you that you need to add more power necessarily to that plot. That's telling you how much power it is consuming for that particular plot. If the number is positive, that means that that plot is generating electricity for your settlement. So that's the only one that can be the, be confusing. The others, it should be, it's just draining that amount. So right now, this Tato Farm is applying a negative one defense penalty a negative one water penalty and adding to food and it's not affecting happiness or power and then it's generating income slash taxes of 1.5 caps and that will be covered in another video where we'll go in depth about how taxes work but just know that looking at these plaques will give you all of the information you need if you're interested in figuring out and learning the the details but you don't actually need this this is the type of thing that uh, the min max type game players will be interested in but for general use, you can just focus on filling up those meters or keeping your needs in the green. So while there's a lot of different factors that can affect dynamic needs, I'm going to go over the baseline expectation you can have 
when you're planning out what plots you want to place down so that you don't have to spend a lot of time looking at these plaques because generally there are a certain amount of effect you can expect from each plot type and then you can just balance accordingly now like I said there are definitely nuances with building plans some of the plots interact with each other and even the owners can affect things but again this baseline will just give you a rough idea so across the board with the exception of martial plots each of the different plots will have a defense penalty. The idea being that as your city evolves and grows, it's going to become a juicier target for raids, and therefore you need to build up enough defenses to match what you're actually building. So in the vanilla game, you only had to worry about keeping your food and water met, and in some settlements, you've got to add quite a bit more defense than that. So to combat this and make it so that you're not turret spamming, martial plots actually create way more defense than you get from a normal guard post. So the idea is with that is that your settlers are a very valuable resource. So if you're going to put them on guard duty, they should be creating a lot more defense for you. Then we've got, for each of the individual plot types, we've got some slight different differences in how they are affecting things. With residential plots, you've got an effect on food, water, and power. The idea being is that as your settlers start leveling up their buildings, it's a sign that they are consuming more and more. And so we wanted to reflect that in the dynamic needs. So as your settle settlement becomes more prosperous, they're going to want more food, they're gonna want water for other things besides just drinking, and they're gonna want power so they can have lights and electricity inside of their homes. Then we've got agricultural. As they start producing more food, they also start requiring additional water. Industrial will get more complex and start requiring more and more power. And then there's also the advanced industrial, which as I mentioned in prior videos, the advanced industrial is not meant for the early game. And one of the reasons for that is that they have a lot of negative penalties on your various needs, especially things like happiness and defense. So you'll definitely wanna check out the building plan selection for advanced industrial before you commit to those because you need to make sure that your settlement can handle the penalties. So obviously if you start building these real early, your resources are gonna be limited and it's gonna be harder for you to meet those. So all of the rest of the plots have a fairly low impact at level one on your resources, whereas the level one of the advanced industrial can be pretty severe and so you need to be prepared for that. Commercial will require more power as they level up, but they also have some unique effects depending on the subtype of commercial. So as you guys know, commercial come in many different flavors. They're bars, they're clothing stores, armor stores, weapon shops, etc. So depending on the type, they'll have different effects. I'm going to give you a few examples of the specific effects. For example, clothing stores, clinics, and bars each require more water, whereas armor and weapon shops will actually have an increase in your defense of your settlement over time. So keep an eye in mind with commercial, there's not a flat stat aside from power, the actual subtype will have the actual impact and that again is where viewing those building plaques can come in handy if you're interested in learning the details of how a particular building plan will affect things. Then Marshall and Recreational will each require more power as well. Marshall being the one plot with the positive impact on your defense natively and then Recreational is your principal source of happiness bonuses. So across the board, depending on the different plots you build, you'll have different penalties and positive benefits, and you've got to find the right balance in each of your settlements in order to create a functional city. Now, you're always encouraged to build vanilla items as well. You don't have to replace all of your defensive needs with plots. You can use a mix of other things, same with water and electricity. You can get those from vanilla objects, which will help with space concerns because plots are quite large, so it can be difficult to rely solely on them. And we tried to keep in mind that you might be using other objects as well to mix and match. So again, I highly recommend you grab HUD framework if you can spare the space in your load order and it doesn't cause any conflicts because the um, HUD on the left there will make it a lot easier to play with dynamic needs without having to get into the nitty gritty of looking at each of the building plaques. But for those of you who like systems and really like to crunch numbers, those plaques are going to be a great spot for you to learn all of the details about how dynamic needs operates. All right, guys, I hope that explains the dynamic needs system, explains some of those quirky UI issues and gets you guys on the right path. Just a reminder, if you don't like the system, you can disable it in the holotape. So stay tuned for additional videos. We're going to continue to show off more and more of what some settlements can do.